All right, we're back. And I hope nobody's confused. Mark has been placed back into the proper direction this episode. So everybody has Mark and his pocket square in a familiar location with a chair on one side and the key on the other side. The irony is, of course, Mark's view is reversed to what he's used to, but Mark is kind of backward anyway. So Yeah, I don't care as long it. as the people are happy with, uh, <laughs> with the way it looks. I'm I'm happy to see that we've been able to do a good job and, and keep a state secret on what the hell the show is about. Judging from the chat, people uh, have not guessed what this incident is. That was absolutely intentional, and I'm glad for it. We try to avoid giving it away because the Wikipedia warriors come in and then start to spoil everything before the show even happens. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mark. What? What are we talking about today? I have no idea, Huntley. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, have, no. I guess we should have posted the idea and then no, they no, told I'll us. tell you this. I, I look, I um when, when you're growing up in New York City schools, um there's a lot of weird islands around the city and and they're kind of like kids like going, what's on that island? What's on that? What's a, all we the one island that everybody fears the most, of course, Rikers Island, <laughs> which you guys which, have one where it's just nothing but corpses. It's like a a, a Funeral yeah, island. no, no, Edlo's Island, Randall's Island, Rikers Island, <laughs> Liberty Island, and it's a, you know it's a mystery. And when you're a kid in school, um, they take you um, Three Mile Island, Three Mile island <laughs> very popular. And, and <laughs> as a kid in school, they take you to Staten Island every year, especially here in Brooklyn. And this is I don't know if this is related to the story, but we would go every year to Staten Island where they had a Dutch Reformation village, Eric. And it was a restored village like the Dutch would have had in the 1600s. Hmm. So they were dressed as Dutch women. They were making yarn and they were cooking and whatever. It was a village. I mean, with, with huts. I mean, <laughs> okay, so for years, I thought that's how the people on Staten Island lived. <laughs> I did not know <laughs> that this was a restoration village because I didn't know what that meant. And we went in second grade, we went in third grade, and I thought those poor bastards on Staten Island, look how they got to live, Ma. And she didn't explain it or anything, but one of the islands next to it is Black Tom, which is where we're going to go with this story. Yeah, look at, at this. Grunt, 167, July 12th, 1967. Um, 1916. 1916, yeah, yeah. No, so yeah, I already got somebody jumping in. By the way, that that's my wife's birthday. Not oh, that year. Uh, Oh, but wow. that is that is her birthday. Wow. Wow. So Black Tom Island is not really an island. That's what I wanted to establish, first of all. It is a uh, garbage pile of, of refuge. And it just, no, no, I'm not making this up. It's not an island at all. So it's like it a barge is just, or... what? It's not a barge then or anything? No, 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 no. It's, it's a pile of garbage. <laughs> okay. And they just kept adding on more and more garbage until the back of it looked from the ships coming in like a black cat with its haunches up, like hunched over black cat, Eric. So they <laughs> called it Black like Tom, Tom Island oh, as a Tomcat. Oh, that's that's the origin of Black Tom. So it just went straight up and, and, and it became a navigational nightmare, what these people created. So they built a bridge and a levee going to the mainland, which is Jersey City. That's That's where the whole thing came from. So they had a bridge, not a bridge. I mean, like, um, um, what's it called? A trestle, uh, not a bridge, like a land bridge. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Uh, and then the Lehigh Valley. A dam? Uh, what's no. that? Like a dam? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm dam. I walkway and okay. anyway, so railroad tracks were eventually laid down, and the Lehigh Valley uh, Transit Authority ran uh, trains right out to it, and it became. A, a series of warehouses and barges and docking for munitions. And that's why I was trying to explain this whole thing. And Jersey City took it over, but it was run by the uh, train companies. Causeway? No, it wasn't a causeway. It was some other phrase that I can't remember, um, but something like that. So it was about a mile out, mile and a half from the mainland. 
So all of these trains from around the country, Eric, where they made munitions, eventually coalesced in Jersey City. And I'm no fan of Jersey City, but I can tell you right now, it couldn't have happened in a better place <laughs> in <laughs> retrospect because that is a shithole city. And no offense, <laughs> no offense to people in Jersey City, but dear God, go at least go to New York. You're a New Yorker. Isn't that like a requirement for you to say that? No, but I think even people in Jersey, if there's any people in Jersey watching this show, I think <laughs> raise your hands. So you could all agree that Jersey City is a shithole city. But it's close to New York and Hoboken, which they renovated in the 70s and 80s and 90s. Actually, the neighboring city, Hoboken, became uh, uh, upscale and filled with condos and people did commute. But Jersey City, I don't think ever, ever survived. That being said, this island, Black Tom Island, was filled with barges and munitions and everything else. And they were shipping the munitions from Black Tom Island aboard... Uh, vessels that would come from England and Russia and other places that were already experiencing uh, the Great War or World War I, Eric. Okay. So the, the, the oddity of this story, the reason this story is so odd is because of the British naval blockade of Germany up in the North Sea at Hamburg. So because of the naval blockade, by the British, Woodrow Wilson, the president who said he would keep us out of war, decided not he to- He ran on that, as a matter of fact. Right, he ra right, absolutely. The Democratic Woodrow Wilson, who eventually invented the League of Nations and- um, Yeah, and had a major effect in the um, education system and the um, the whole factory um, assembly line aspect of it. Yeah, he's a prize. Woodrow yeah, Wilson- Yeah, this a, guy's a real na naive- Yeah, he's a great uh, guy. Uh, ideologue, but he <laughs> he, in his infinite wisdom decides not to sell munitions and have a blockade of Germany, uh, at, a blockade of Germany buying munitions. The British have a naval uh, blockade of Germany and the Germans now have to scramble to try to buy munitions all around the world because they're already in World War I. We're not and we're backing the British, but we're not in it. So it's really awkward for us. So the Germans uh, don't want to, as I was saying to you before, they don't want to get on our bad side because they don't want us in the war on the side of the British. Sure. And that's where the story becomes really bizarre. Well, we liked the Germans too, didn't we? Okay, yeah. The other thing about the Germans were they were considered the number one immig immigrant group in the United States among every other immigrant group and. Let's face it, not, not all the immigrant groups were rated in the top 10. There were some that, you know, did not do so well. But the Germans were not one Especially of them. Especially the Irish. They really didn't like mention the them. There's half of me crying out right now. <laughs> well, the other half wasn't that liked either. The other half they didn't like either. So, I mean, look, I mean, we weren't friends of the Germans, but they did live in Yorkville on the Upper East Side. And they had shops and cab they came cabinet makers, and they came with... It came with two things, money and a trade, which the other immigrant groups did not. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Frank Barron, that's me. I'm president of the Woodrow Wilson Appreciation Society. Absolutely. <laughs> I was former president of the Frank Barron Appreciation Society, but we had to shut down when Barron uh, went to jail. Okay, so the reality of it is the Germans begin a series of uh, sabotage episodes around the United States. They infiltrate the entire United States with spies and saboteurs. And you say to yourself, well, that's weird, right? But again, yeah. we don't care. There's no, in other words, we don't give a crap that they have spies and saboteurs. We're not in the war. We're not in the war. We have no FBI. We have no CIA. We have no Department of Homeland Security. We just want to be left alone. And yet their mission is to destroy our munitions industry. That's what they're trying to do. And not, here's the part two, that's amazing, never let on that it was sabotage. Now think about that in a war, because when you're doing a war scenario, you don't care if they know it's sabotage. In fact, you want to demoralize the people you're being, right? Eric? Right, well, this is, well, we were the store, and they wanted to bomb the store, but pretend that they didn't do it. Because right, they were right. trying to prevent anybody from being able to go to the store to get the weapons that were being used against them. 
Is that right. a good analogy or? It's a great analogy. And Woodrow Wilson was the last person on the block to know that the store was being bought by the Germans, a <laughs> schmuck. And everybody who went to him, he went, come on, what do you mean, the Germans? That's ridiculous. He kept them all, the, the German ambassador was the leader of the spy ring and the best friend of Woodrow Wilson, the I German ambassador himself. He was the guy who had met with Wilson and going, look, you know, we're in a tough spot here. Can you sell us something? And Wilson would go, nah, we really can't do it. it who's that? That's von uh, Stuckelheimer? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the German, that's uh, von Bernstorff, right? Yeah, yeah, the German, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Count von Bernstorff. Here's Johann another von shot Bernstorff. of him. Yeah, he was the uh, German ambassador to the United States. He, he doesn't had, look imperial at all. He doesn't look imperial. He was the imperial guy. But uh, <laughs> he was teamed up with Franz von Ritten, Rintelen and Franz von Papen. Everybody was von something or other back then uh, in the olden days. So these three guys would work up. That's von, uh, von, von Rintelen. Rintelen. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Rintelen. Yeah, he was kind of the mastermind behind the thing. And these guys, he was a military um, attache, uh, but also had cover in the United States. They all had offices in downtown uh, Wall Street, beautiful offices. They had tons of money. The German government um, sent them here, but they went around to German American businesses collecting millions of dollars for these sabotage operations, Eric. The German Americans, now the German American businesses uh, looked at it like, well, we're not attacking the United States. We're attacking the enemy of our homeland. So again, there's a lot of weird ideology going on here in this particular pre-war scenario. It kind of makes, it's not that completely different. Not that I'm justifying it because obviously I don't like sabotage of any kind, but the weather underground or others who are saying we're not attacking you yeah. know, the, the country, we're attacking this war machine or this the war mechanism yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. So it's kind of a similar um, Yeah. Philosophy yeah, it's very thinking. similar, but they these guys were integrated into the government. Right. So the British, there were cables, right? So the British, uh, uh, cables like physical cables underneath the Atlantic, right? So the British uh, government was in tight with the cable companies. So they went to the cable companies and said, can we have the German secret messengers? And they said, sure. We're, we're just like AT&T. Here you go. <laughs> so they would turn over these coded uh, German messages. So the British went berserk trying to crack the code. And that was a complete British thing that they were able to crack that code. But they did stumble onto some briefcases with codes in them. And they did do some spy work themselves, the British, to help crack the code. And eventually they were able to um, realize what the Germans were up to. Not that they could stop it. So you see, British cracking German codes. Yeah, this no, all that never happened code. again, did it? No, no, this all <laughs> happens again. That's the point of this show. Everything, you know, I'm reading up on this thing the past couple of weeks, and I'm just going like, okay, there's a house in Chevy Chase, Maryland, near the Chevy Chase Country Club in Maryland, Eric. In that house is a guy. Um, his name was not Digby. Um, his name was um, Dilger, Ant um, um, Anton Dilger. So in this house in, in uh, Maryland is a complete bioweapons lab. And in the bioweapons lab, uh, Anton Dilger is manufacturing anthrax. And why are they manufacturing anthrax? They're giving it to the saboteurs to inject into the horses that are being shipped from Black Tom Island to the mm -hmm. Russians and to the British, killing the horses with a with a bioweapons lab in uh, Chevy Chase, Maryland. Well, in World 19, War One, 1916, nineteen sixteen. World War One was full of bio and um, chemical weapons. I mean, that, that uh, mustard gas is just all over the place. We this stuff goes bad. Well, yeah. I'm talking about a lab that's in Baltimore, though. You know, oh, yeah. in the United States. You know, unbeknownst to us. You know, with a substance that later becomes popular after 9-11. And now we do keep keep the tradition alive. We have Fort Detrick, which just expands. Yeah, no, I, I, that's the first thing I thought. Isn't it weird that Fort Detrick is a couple of miles from where this guy's lab was? You oh, know, uh, absolute coincidence, Mark. I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, <clears throat> so part of their part of their game was to uh, do anything to blow up munitions around the country, and that was oh, they what they first tried to do, ironically. 
was to bring over Irish strike breakers who were socialists to get the munitions plants to go out on strike. And the Irish said, yeah, we'll be happy to do anything to help hurt the British. So they brought over these Irish uh, strike breakers, not, not strike breakers, but agitators who were great mm -hmm. uh, orators. And they would go around the country to um, different factories and get them to walk out, you know, and go on strike. But this wasn't effective enough because they go back and they'd make munitions like, oh, mm -hmm. then the second plan was to buy all the munitions they could. And they, mm -hmm. these guys, uh, Von Papen and the other guys would go around the country saying, how many, how much munitions do you have? And they go, well, we've got $5 million worth. He goes, good, wrap it up. I'll take it all. And they go, all right. So he would, buy, but they made so much so fast, they quickly realized that this plan was going to fall apart, which it did, which it did. I, I'm sure that the industrialists were like, oh, damn, we sold out already. Right. <laughs> Let's uh, wrap up operations. Thank you right, very right, much. Right. Remember, we just covered that with the amount that they were making during World War One from uh, 1915 through 18. Right. Well, this has echoes of the Smedley Butler thing because Woodrow Wilson sends him to Veracruz. At the, later in this story, you'll see why Mexico becomes important in this story. And I remember the Smedley Butler trip where he's in Veracruz uh, dealing with the Mexican-American War. This will come back a little later. I think that was uh, 1914, and this will be a little bit later on in this part of the story. But they are interconnected. They are interconnected, without a doubt. And Woodrow Wilson's whole thing is to stay out of this war. So the Germans, of course, now have uh, submarines. And everybody's had submarines for a while, but the Germans have, like, the the... Deutschland, which is 315 feet long, holds 28 men, and they're not even, they're, they're sinking, well, obviously they sank the Lusitania, so the Lusitania goes down 1914, killing 128 Americans and 1,300 or 1,400 others, I forget the exact number, but keep in mind, the Lusitania was loaded with ammo, and that's why they took it out and they caught the British red handed and they were trying to use them as human shields. Eric, those pe those people who died on the Lusitania were essentially British human shields. And that went down to the bottom and they found the, the ammo later mm. off the coast of Ireland. So, and the bodies were washing up left and right. It was sure. horrific. But again, still not enough to get the U.S. into war, Eric. Right. Mm. Still not enough. So they needed more stuff for the British. The British like to suck us into things, Eric. You ever notice that? The British like to make us do something for them. And it's usually through some sort of false flag, I think you call it in your business, or yeah. something to that effect. My business. Mark still thinks I'm in the CIA. <laughs> no, I'm at the Army. I, I was talking about the Army. Your... <laughs> I didn't mean this. You're the one who brings up the CIA. Look, no, I, I, just because I you're getting a pension, interviews. just because you're getting a pension from them, doesn't mean you're still working for them. <laughs> oh God! Look, I mean, what kind I, of security have... clearance does your wife have at at Langley? She must have something to be a librarian. Langley Air Force Base, not Langley, Virginia. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I've had more interact. Uh, you've had more interactions with the CIA than I have, probably. Right, but in I'm your not own house. They're coming after me. <laughs> I'm going after them. <laughs> I'm not the one who applied for the job. Anyway, so make a long story short, they send over the um, the Deutschland, and mm -hmm. the Deutschland again. I don't know how this happens. The Deutschland comes right into uh, into the Black Tom Harbor and docks and they begin loading stuff up so the police come around and the army comes around and goes what are you doing they go nothing and they go what are you doing here nothing just you know docking keep in mind dozens and dozens of german ships here you see the situation they're all interned in jersey city they can't leave the sailors are going around Jersey City, German sailors getting drunk every single night. Hundreds upon hundreds of sailors are basically furloughed into Jersey City, which is maybe why Jersey City ended up like it did. But the ships, the ships, and I'm talking about German barges, German destroyers, German U-boats, all the German naval and, 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 and merchant marine vessels are locked into that harbor and aren't allowed to leave because of the embargo. I'm sure the sailors are just having a rough time of it, though. They're like, okay, yeah. got to go back into town. Right. Uh, go drinking. <laughs> all right. the, so, all okay. the bartenders, everybody else are like, hey, I'm okay with this. Yeah, they, uh, nobody <laughs> had a beef with the Germans, so sure. And they were getting paid. 
and they would just drink and, they, and they'd go back on board the ship to go to sleep. I mean, they were living, it's so bizarre. They were living on these ships and going into town and not really having a job. I mean, they would clean the ship, they, they would get dressed as sailors, but they couldn't leave the harbor, if that makes any sense to anybody. Dude, it's like the Navy all year round when they're not actually doing something. They go to port and they go into town, they get dressed. Right. They go it's back like to the tall J. ships when they come into New York. Right, like yeah. the tall ships, yeah, it's 1976. Same. So anyway, the, the, the Deutschland pulls in, huge ship but it, it doesn't have guns on it. it it's for which is i couldn't understand this thing but they use some of their subs for uh to carry uh merchandise back to england back to germany against the english blockade so the subs would go underneath the water and mm -hmm. get past the blockade and bring crap back right yeah okay so <laughs> the sub pulls in Everybody's looking at it, including Woodrow Wilson, who's on vacation apparently in his own boat um, with the with the F, with the the army trailing him, and and it pulls in. They load it up in the middle of the night under cover of darkness, and they tell the captain. Uh, the, the The press is there. Every single reporter in New York is going, "Where you going, Captain? When are you pulling out? What's going to happen?" And he's like not saying anything. And finally, the last day, the day before the explosion. He's getting the hell out of there. So oh, he says, so he coincidentally just happened to leave the day before. Yeah, the day he knew to get the hell out because this was obviously sure. being run by the German government. And he says, any of you men want to come back to Germany and go to church tomorrow? You're more than welcome. Hop on board. <laughs> and of course, he's kidding. And he's in his full you know, military outfit. And they said, how are you going to run the blockade, Captain? He goes, you'll see. And he submerges. The, apparently, the 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 ability of this uh, vessel, the Deutschland out of Bremen, it was able to subs to submerge entirely, Eric, in 90 seconds. By the way, you, you mentioned earlier about um, not having guns. Right. I, I could be wrong, but I have a theory about that, judging from the time period, which is uh, 1914, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. And every gun is technically a hole to leak. Oh, so that could if, be, but they do. If, put... if you're not going to be shooting at each other underwater or anything else, your only purpose is to you know have stealth. So having guns would add vulnerabilities plus the ammo to it, and they weren't right. well, super but, good at the time. He, he didn't have torpedoes on board, and he didn't have the gun, the, the right. surface-mounted machine guns that the rest of the German U-boats did have. They did right. have surface-mounted machine guns and torpedoes, obviously, because they were torpedoing ships. This did not hmm. have that. It was, in other words, when it, I think when it went back to Bremen, it was retrofitted eventually to be a war machine. But at this time, it was being used to funnel merchandise, you know, which yeah. just seems odd. I mean, how, how much room do you have in there to funnel merchandise? I don't know. It's bizarre. But anyway, he runs the blockade. A lot of it could have been spy work on the part of the subs anyway to see what was going on. Sure. But these guys that they that they eventually bring in to do this work, I don't know if you have a picture of these guys. There was a guy. Um, oh, let's just show Walter Scheel first. Let, let's see a picture of Walter Scheel just so you understand the science of this thing, because this is so far advanced what they're doing. This guy, Walter Scheel, was a pharmacist in New Jersey, German-American pharmacist. And that was his cover. He drank a lot. He you know, was a guy who never spoke. He walked the streets of Jersey City with a pearl-handled revolver on his hip. I don't know what that was about, but he was a sleeper German spy chemist. That was his cover, and he'd been in the United States for years. As and he sleeper. looks like one, does he not? I mean, that's yeah. a Raiders of the Lost Ark um, villain shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what Walter Scheel invented was the German cigar bomb and also called a pencil, also called a glass tube. And um, I don't know if you have a sketch of it up there, but it, it, I can explain what this thing is. It's a glass enclosed cigar shaped device. Yeah, this is actually Walter Scheel's sketch. And if you see the middle of it on the uh, uh, on the left, the bottom side is uh, a type of, uh, of chemical that would explode, let's say, something that's really um, um, phosphorescent. And on the other side is a, is a potash. Let me, it's sulfuric acid on the bottom 
and chloride of potassium on the top. But the key mm. to the device, so this thing's like seven inches long, very narrow, and is a glass tube. Okay. The device in the middle is a cylindrical coin, right, that goes goes uh, uh, in blocking the two substances. The thickness of that coin would act as a time bomb for the device. The brilliance of it is the thinner the coin, the quicker it would eat through the sulfuric acid to the other right. side, causing an explosion. Okay, so Shields genius was to come up with various size coins to put in there, allowing the person who placed it to know that literally days would go by, Eric, before it blew. It's like Hours. the world's worst hourglass. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Think about it. So this is his claim to fame. The anthrax guy is down in Baltimore, but this guy's in Jersey City creating these cigars. And these cigars are um, given to the saboteurs, and their job is to place them at the spots where the munitions are on those ships, Eric. And the ships are in the harbor. They're kind of sitting ducks. And these guys, I think one guy was Lothar Witzke, uh, was one of the German saboteurs. Um, Lothar Witzke was one, and there was a kid, um, Fred Herman, Michael Kristoff. Uh, these were German. Yeah, this is this is uh, Lothar Witzke, who later formed the band Lothar and the Hand People. Like yeah, that. he looks like a uh, boy band member for sure. No, I know, I know. I mean, this is a handsome Germans, guy. They were all living in Brooklyn and New York, so they had a couple of them were born in Brooklyn. You know, they weren't immigrants, Eric. Um, they were from the United States, but German American. Uh, Lothar Kurt was also one. Oh, that's the other guy. Yeah, that's his his partner. Um, Not as handsome. He, he was more the muscle. Yeah, Kurt Janke. Yeah, that's <laughs> Kurt. Well, that that was probably his passport photo. They had an <laughs> entire operation of making phony passports to Germans right in New York, right next to the passport office. I mean, they were running. Such a huge operation. It was so well funded uh, by German industry and American German industry. Um, these two guys. OK, so these guys, plus a guy named Michael Kristoff. Um, I don't have a photo of Kristoff, but he was 23. Kristoff. Oh, here he is. Oh, great. Li liberal reward for information on the whereabouts of Michael Kristoff. Well, he, he lived on East 83rd Street, a place that I lived uh, at one point among I lived among the Germans at one point in my uh, New York uh, living arrangements on East 83rd Street and York. And even in the 80s, it was all German. You know, even then, Eric, mm -hmm. German stores, German butchers, German everything spoke German. Um, weird place. Still, you know, still a New York uh, German uh, area. Nice. I think this is the arrest. Um it's got his fingerprints on it and everything. Okay, let me tell you another thing. When the the they they pick a guy named Tom Tunney, I think his name was. Uh, um, he was the NYPD head of the first bomb squad. Yeah, here he is. They didn't have a bomb squad. This guy becomes the head of the bomb squad in New York. Now, you're, the reason there's a bomb squad is not because of these Germans. It's the Italians. They're blowing shit up left and right, and it's really the fact that that Nobel invents dynamite and mm. begins to sell it around the world, that shit starts blowing up around the world. The Italian anarchists in New York get a hold of dynamite and they start blowing shit up. So this guy becomes the head of the first uh, New York City bomb squad. But there's not much he can do about it. He He thinks... He thinks it's mafia related, but eventually it becomes obvious to him that it's political. But he's not even on to the Germans doing it because he's kind of trying to deal with New York's problems, which are many. Things are blowing up like, as you said, the weather underground in the 70s. Well, the Germans, too, were known as like storekeepers, hard workers, nose to the grindstone, not really big troublemakers. Right. I mean, it's like uh, wouldn't be them. They're not rabble rousers. Right. Right. And they blended in. You know, they assimilated well. They spoke perfect English. They had a German accent. They looked like Americans. You know, they were all over the country. Wisconsin, Illinois, New York, Jersey. You know, I mean, they were everywhere. Pennsylvania, the Deutsch. Pennsylvania. <laughs> the Dutch is Deutsch. Right, but, right. Yeah. So anyway, so this, these three guys go out 
and it's i want to say like july it's hot there's mosquitoes it's uh, jersey city as i mentioned before it's a garbage dump there's a lot of mosquitoes so sometimes the guards would put out these smudge pots uh to create smoke like when you go camping they have mm. these different things yeah. that, that, that shoo away mosquitoes so yeah we have them here that we have trucks that go by and really blow, but yeah yeah they, they, oh wow they drive by and blow in the air um you know like oh that's old school stuff okay that's cool so anyway so the these guys are finally have all their ducks in a row and they row out these two guys, uh, Lothar and 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 um, um, Janky, actually row out in a rowboat, and the other guy, um, Christoph, is on foot. Oh, and I, he I goes have a in. Picture for you, by the way. Oh, oh, very nice. There's oh, look at that. <clears throat> anyway, sorry, I I forgot to bring that up earlier. I thought beautiful. Cool. That's one. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, they they kind of uh, as they evolved. They began to call them crayons they were, or pencils. They were so thin and efficient. The earlier ones were more cigar-shaped, but Scheele was able to refine it, as were the Germans back in Berlin. And they shipped them back in the bottom of possibly the, the, the Deutschland, you know, because they did, um, the Germans were stopped so many times that they were using Dutch passports and getting on board various vessels to, um, to bring information and merchandise back and forth if you could really... put that in a milk bottle or something you know for stashing it or hiding it size um, wise well they had them in these wooden boxes and they fit in about 50 vertically mm. that it would steal wool is what what uh, what i've read and uh they had to be careful because <laughs> these things could blow you know what i mean so anyway think about what you're getting at you've got two hundred thousand tons of ammunition eric tnt bullets bullets bombs Every single type of munition from artillery shells, all sitting there like a sitting duck. And across the river, uh, less than a mile away, is lower Manhattan and civilization and Jersey and Jersey City and Newark and Hoboken and everything else on the other side. You know, not to mention Liberty Island, which is right across with the Statue of Liberty. So these guys paddle out in the middle of the night. And yeah, that's today. Yeah, that's a memorial uh, from... For this. That's seeing it from top, yeah. So you can see the. Distance. Oh right, right. This is actually you could see how far it is. Yeah, yeah. So these guys, about midnight, maybe a little later on Sunday morning, the, they had so much surveillance. They had come and measured every single inch of that those docks, um, and every single barge that was there, and they put markings on the barges. They put other guys put markings on the barges of where the cigars were supposed to go. This was so well orchestrated, Eric, involving so many people, all German. Well, or German. It sounds people. like Germans. I mean, they're known for their efficiency. Yes, that's the <laughs> point. Engineers. This is not a guy just throwing a hand grenade. You would think, like me, I would just go, "All right, give me the money. I'm going to throw a grenade into the ship. Probably do the same thing, right?" Oh no. Yeah. But the Germans were trying desperately not to be exposed. And that's really why they went into this um, incredible machinery of doing this. So they would not think it was sabotage, but the smudge pot angle was intentional. So they would think that there was a fire caused by oh, smudge, smudge pods. pods. Right. Catch on and have a right, cascading right. effect, kind of like, right. a, you know, an electric wire that went bad in a house before you yep. burn it down. Or... Yeah. <laughs> but this has been successful across the country. They have yet to be caught. And and later on, this, despite the size of this, this would be the equivalent of what Woodrow Wilson said the next day. He said, I'm more concerned about uh, the the British war. I don't, he says, the incident in New Jersey was a private railway disaster. It's not my concern. That's the next day in the New York Times. That would be like George Bush saying, you know, uh, uh, something happened. 9-11 is a local activity to New York City. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was a, a private railway thing The um, with the Lehigh Valley Rail, Rail Associates. Oh, by the way, when this does happen, when this thing blows up in a couple of seconds, their response is to physically arrest the presidents of the railroad and everyone involved with the dock and the railroad in handcuffs with SWAT teams, Eric. They literally went after the executives, blaming them for not guarding, not the, you know, not saboteurs. They just said, this is your incompetence that this happened. 
and they were all physically arrested. Yeah, here's, a, here's an image of um, part of the uh, dock collapsing under the explosion. Now, the explosion goes off, I want to say at 1228 in the morning, Sunday morning, and it is like a nuclear bomb. It destroys all of the windows across in New York City, all the way up to 42nd Street. It goes all the way down to Philadelphia. It's like a 5.5 on the Richter scale. Everything in New Jersey is blown out. Everything in lower Manhattan is blown out. Doors within office buildings, down hallways, are blown out. Every window in lower Manhattan is blown out. Everybody be believes they're under attack or a fireball from outer space has hit the city. Nobody knows what this is. Keep in mind, there's no nuclear bomb at this time. So everybody believes, and, and not only that, the bullets keep firing into the city, Eric. Bullets. Oh, God. So they believe, the firemen show up and they're taking the hoses uh, uh, and sticking them above the ship line to not get hit by the bullets that are firing out of the And they water. had advanced equipment at the time. Yes, this is how that got there. Now, this is only a block away, so I bet on the second horse he came in third in the trifecta of Monticello. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so they get there quickly. However, bullets, bombs, and shrapnel are going up into the sky. The guys who were in the rowboat, the two guys, they were blown 75 feet straight up in the air, landed in mm. the Hudson River, and survived. The firemen... Whoa, whoa, they, whoa, whoa, survived, you just said? Totally survived. Yep, the two guys survived. They were blown straight up in the air, just like a, a clowns in a cannon. And they and bought a lottery ticket the next day. No. And they survived, yeah. Yeah, yeah. God. They were, but they had, pat, what they did was they paddled as fast as they could. But it wasn't like the bomb was going off in five minutes. So they had time to get, they were trying Still, to get to Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I think they it was even the, more than they expected. Yeah, there's a bottle. Speaking of bottles, that's a remnant of one of the bottles um, from the site. Um, obviously charred. It looks like Hiroshima or something. Yeah. The firemen down. who showed up were blown sky high out of their boots, Eric. It was mm. reported by the Jersey papers. The firemen themselves who showed up, they were blown sky high. Everybody was blown straight up. It was like one of those thermobaric bombs. Uh, the, the, the whoosh, the whoosh from the bomb sucked all the air out of the entire area, forcing everything up in the air, you know. And then back in, I'm sure. And back in, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> God. <laughs> Somebody said, yeah. There you go. You you only die from sudden deceleration, not sudden acceleration. Oh, he's probably right. I mean, if you, if you, came, if you landed in the river, you know, you might have a good chance. Now, yeah. statistically, they claimed only seven people were killed, Right. However, wow. what the Jersey authorities said was hundreds of people were living on those barges illegally. Hundreds of illegal immigrants and homeless mm. people were there illegally, unaccounted for. In fact, the head security guy of the of the uh, barge is, you know, the guy who patrolled the the uh, terminal. Uh, his body didn't show up till a month later, washed ashore on the Hudson. So, I mean, there was a lot of missing body parts and bodies, you know, but accounted for was seven. But the damage done was something like a half a billion dollars in today's money uh, to the, the area itself, uh, lower Wall Street, all the way, like I said, all the way, the entire Brooklyn Bridge shook back and forth, all right? The, wow. the, the New York Public Library is 42nd Street and 5th. Every shop window, just think about 5th Avenue, every shop window on 5th Avenue blown out, all the way up to Midtown. Let's see if we yeah, can there, see it here. Yeah. There's black That's Tom the Jersey itself. side. That's the Jersey part right there. That that long stretch. Okay, that's railroad tracks and causeway, or as the guy said, a causeway. I guess we can use that. That's railroad tracks and the passageway out to the uh, island of refuge, of refuse, that uh, became Black Tom Island. So Lehigh Valley Transit, the train company, owned the physical island. They owned it because they made it into a train terminal and paid for it and bought it. It was legally part of Jersey City, though, as a geography matter. And okay. all of the church windows, everything was blown out. The phone lines destroyed. No phones. All the way down to Philadelphia, all the way down to D.C. The, the, it, it, it is, there was nothing ever like this in the history of the United States. 
even 9-11 did not cause that circular amount of damage, Eric, right? Right, right. right. You could see the, um, yeah, you could see the phone lines down hanging off of the here. And <clears throat> the poles oh. cracked. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. We've got a couple other photos. There's a couple of collapsed barges and... Um, this is all I have on the damage hmm. at this point. So, yeah. That that one and the um, munition. Well, I, I, I showed these already. But. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Just to give you an idea what that is. Let me see this here. And the wrecked warehouses. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you can see it's pretty wide. It, it looks like a hurricane went through or something. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, Sometimes. all of these roofs collapsed um, on all the different buildings and churches. The roofs caved in on a lot of them. I heard and, the Statue of Liberty actually took damage, too. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. The The torch of the Statue of Liberty was hit with shrapnel. The, just the torch, uh, but, well, the rest of it, too. But the torch was damaged and, and never repaired to this day. We're still not allowed to go into the torch today because of the damage from this incident was so severe that it's still considered unstable to this day, Eric. Wow. And in the old days, uh, the old days before this, you were able as a, as a uh, tourist to go into the torch itself. And once you go there, they tell you right away, you can't go in the torch because every kid from school says, oh, we're going to go in the torch. The torch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can't go in the torch today. Like, what? what when is it going to open? Well, I know it's 1969, but it's been closed since 1916. So we're working on it. So every kid was told that you couldn't go in there. That's so 106 after years later. We are yeah, now. they still couldn't fix it. But that was after the Dutch Reformation village. So they had other issues to work on. The uh, Okay, so this does not get us into the war because this is not revealed. This They assign a guy from a law firm who is involved in a lawsuit, a law firm, to get money from the German government for this debacle. Right. And the, the guy who is part of this law firm goes after the Germans and does not receive money from the German government, ninety five million dollars eventually until 1953. Eric. He sues. But the Third Reich says, nah, we're the Third Reich. We're not going to pay. So, OK, so after we defeat the Third Reich, the suit doesn't go away. And in 1953, there's a settlement from the German government to pay out ninety five million dollars in damages, admitting that they were saboteurs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the guy, the lawyer who won the suit is a man by the name John McCloy, uh, who goes on to the Warren Commission and to become the CIA. <laughs> and that's how he makes his bones. So McCloy, uh, Warren Commission John McCloy, ends up um, winning this lawsuit against the Germans, the Imperial Germans, the Nazi Germans, and then the post-Nazi Germans, whatever they were called, the uh, you know the post-war people. However, that being said, Woodrow Wilson is completely uh, in the closet about this thing. He doesn't know anything about this. Woodrow Wilson is cannot believe the Germans are involved. You know why? Because they tell him that. So he, he, he believes everything they tell him until there's an interesting development. And this involves Mexico. And if we remember Mexico with, with in episode 79, when we had Smedley Butler down in Mexico fighting, <laughs> fighting the Mexicans, um, they are secretly being approached, unbeknownst to us, that if and when the United States gets into the war, the Great War, Mexico would be allied with Germany. And Mexico, for their alignment and backing of Germany, would receive as a gift Texas, New Mexico, and Eric Hunley's home state of Arizona would be taken back into the Mexican government and be part of Mexico. So Mexico goes, hmm, interesting. We fight with the Germans against our the U.S. interests. And if we win, which is a big if, we get Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas as a gift. Of course, we'll be utterly destroyed by that. But notice it's not California because nobody really wants California. Right. No, they said we're going to take that in 50 years anyway. So don't worry about it. We're going to we have another plan for that one. So uh 
they nobody believes this and nobody knows about this. It's top secret until the Zimmerman telegram. And remember I told you about the cables? Okay. The British intercept this cable by an ambassador named Zimmerman, German ambassador to Mexico. And it lays out the entire plan that I just described, including trying to get Japan involved for some reason, like the Japanese are going to get involved as an ally to the No German. foreshadowing at all. Right, right. I don't, I don't know what's going on there, but um, this this telegram is captured through this method uh, ironically wilson tried to cut off communications through telegrams with germany but the german ambassadors said we need to keep the lines open so we can communicate with you woodrow wilson that wasn't their intent they needed to keep the cable lines open so they could do shit like this to the mexican uh, uh, uh ambassador and all the other you know, ambassadors around the world that they had. So this ended up entrapping them because the British, sounding very similar today, leaked this to the New York Times. And the New York Times, which obviously took stolen documents here, <laughs> sounding familiar, and published them, this finally causes the United States. Don't worry, though. It won't go out on Twitter. It won't they'll, go out on Twitter. It. This was blocked by the... The New York Post tried to run it, but they were blocked. So the New York Times ran it. Yeah. And this ended up <laughs> finally causing so much public outrage in the United States, which is what the British wanted to get into the war, uh, World War I. And that's how we got into the war. Here's a cartoon where they're carving up a piece. <laughs> they're carving up a piece of... Uh, <clears throat> I guess that's, yeah, Arizona. New Mexico and Texas. And Texas, yeah. There's a question we're, we're, mark in California, like, who really wants them? Mm -hmm. your, your, home, your home state right now, everybody's like, you know what? Well, let's just give it to Mexico. Right. They won't <laughs> even take it. No, it's really sad. <laughs> but anyway, so here's a little political cartoon. I don't know. That was like from the New York World or some paper. It wasn't the New York Times. But then there were, did, was there another cartoon, perhaps, or just this one? Just this one. Bob. Okay. Well, anyway, so this spreads and this finally, uh, the people demand that we get into World War I. And um, uh, that the, the rest, as they say, is history. You know, the, the, the keep in mind that we only had back in the day, we only had ONI. As in, I keep saying this about ONI, Office of Naval Intelligence. And mm -hmm. what ONI specialized in was ships. And the reason they specialized in ships was because of this story I just told you. Oh, somebody in the chat pointed out. I got to pay attention. It says, for Japan. So California is going to be given to Japan. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't Hold know on. that. Look, look, look at that. Good, good eye. Yeah, right here. Where is that? For Japan, if you look oh, at it. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Sorry yeah, that, that. that will also lead to FDR interning the Japanese in uh, World War II. The, part of this whole thing leads to Japanese internment, by the way, by FDR. Who, of course, was the head of the of, Secretary, Secretary of the Navy. Navy. Yeah. And o and I. <laughs> o and I. Everything is O and I. Lee Harvey Oswald was O and I. People don't mm -hmm. understand. O and I is secret. They don't have movies of O and I. They, they do not toot their own horn. When O and I, this is a sidebar story, but we'll get to it eventually. When O and I had to report to the... Um, um, the Select Committee on Assassinations in the 70s, the House Select Committee on Assassinations, they were told to bring their documents, uh, what they had on the Kennedy assassination. So a guy showed up and they said, where's the docs? He goes, we destroyed them. He go and they went, what? You're under subpoena. He goes, go fuck yourself. <laughs> that was O and I. You forget that Helm, the CIA, Helm goes and testifies, gets into a fight with Frank Church and Ted Kennedy, and it becomes a big family jewels debacle, Eric. You know, where he's holding up the gun and everything. O and I did not get involved in that stuff they just said destroy documents nice nice to know you, you well know. hw was also a world war ii vet for the navy i don't know if he was tied to the o and i or not but probably cross paths uh, the old the old man or yeah yeah well i mean obviously cia because he's filing documents. well that's what i'm saying he was cia later but he might have even no but I mean, even in, I even in 63 he's in dallas filing cia uh reports so i mean mm -hmm. and he had the phony uh oil company which we'll get into when we do George DeMorenschild, how George Bush and DeMorenschild were linked together, linking them to the Kennedy assassination. George DeMorenschild was a friend 
and handler of Lee Harvey Oswald and a friend of George H.W. Bush. So we'll get into that. But I, I, I think that uh, he becomes head of the CIA, not the head of the sure. O&I, obviously. No, I but, meant going back to World War II, where he was a vet. Right, uh, right. But keep in mind, 49, you start to see the creation of the CIA. But there is nothing. There is no FBI at this point. There's a Bureau of Investigation. And as sure. you pointed out um, earlier in the week, this leads to what act? The Espionage Act, right, Eric? Mm-hmm. This, all this stuff here eventually leads to the Espionage Act and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Uh, here's some of my family members coming to Thanksgiving uh, mm-hmm. right in front of the, yep, the old protesting house. Protesting the Espionage Act. Oh, anyway. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, so the Espionage Act and, and, and the FBI comes out of the uh, Bureau of Investigation out of D.C. There is no national police force, but there is a New York Times outcry and media outcry to create a national police force because of what the Germans did. So let me see. Let let me get this straight. So sort of like after Uh 9-11, there was an act. Uh It was called the Patriot Act, but this is the Espionage Act. Right. And then we created a new department of the government. Yeah. Yeah. Department of Homeland Homeland Security. Security. And I remember when they created that, I said, I I remember how fast and they hired people. I mean, it was like, Literally in a week, we had this right, Eric. I mean, very quick upper. I'm just it saying was it. so fast. You just went. <laughs> what do you mean? You got a thousand employees? The thing started last week. Bing. We're already at the airport. They already know which department's going to shove under it. And we're going to put it here. We got a new position. All right, moving on. Yeah, no, no nothing's repeating anyway, itself all at all. Of that, all of that legacy and how to do it goes back to 1916, 1917, and this storyline. That's why. The Black Tom Island explosion story is not discussed. It's not discussed because it leads to a lot of nefarious deep state stuff. It's not discussed because we were caught without pants down. It's not discussed because of our relationship with Germany being an ally. And there's a multitude of reasons that we did not learn this in PS 194 in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. We did not learn this because... There's, you know, there's deep state operations going on there that this was when everybody said, well, Woodrow Wilson's an idiot and we need a national police force, you know, and there are spies. Right, right. Anyway, uh, John W. is saying Lusitania was not it was not 1916 or 17. It was actually 1915. So, right. I don't know what I said. Yeah. But (laughs) it has has munitions on board and. Mm -hmm. No, no problem. I was just, I was just oh, correcting oh, yeah, it because yeah. I, I was like, yeah, let me before, catch it, it in was the past. We got into the war, obviously. What I was saying is that <clears throat> the sinking of the Lusitania, which was the equivalent to 9 11 in terms of death, did not get us into the war, uh, the Great War at all. Even though, I mean, there were hundreds of Americans, I mean, 128, I think, Americans were on board. But uh, I mean, it was the fastest cruise ship, the most luxurious cruise ship in the world, Eric, until its sister ship, the Mauritania you know, which went a little bit faster. But I mean, to get to Europe that quickly in luxury, keep in mind, you had to take a ship again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it was like supersonic. I mean, it was like the, um, what is it, Concord of the day? I, I forget which what, what the jet was we used to have. Yeah, the Concord, Concord right? Concord, yeah. So that was the Concord of the sea. Uh, right. In equivalent. Right. But the reality of it is, the reason O&I is so important is they all they did was monitor the movement of ships. They had the name of every ship. They knew every ship. Everybody did this because everything involved warships and ships. That's it. You know, I mean, later on, when the jet age comes, people monitor tail numbers. Right, Eric? Out of out of. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we have that now. Yeah, I mean, yes, there was there was land and sea. Right. There, there were a few zeppelins running around at this time, but not some people thought. It's funny you should mention the zeppelin. Some people thought. It was a Zeppelin bombing that the uh, the thermobaric nature of the bomb that was uh, mm. the, that it was a because they had bombed Paris with mm. Zeppelins. They had launched the Zeppelin attack on Paris and the description of it. Thank you. Um, Tyrone. Welcome, Tyrone Smith. It's a good stage name for a porn star. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> welcome aboard. The uh, they they thought it was a Zeppelin attack. Some people in New Jersey, but then of course they were. F- also had the Hindenburg, the horror of the Hindenburg years later, and they also had War of the Worlds. So we really can't depend on the people from Jersey to tell us what the actual truth was of these events. They're constantly... Listen to the digs. Listen to the digs. 
He left themselves open for this, you know. And I, <laughs> I know a lot of girls from New Jersey. They're good people. A lot of some of the men, not so good. But, you but what I think is funny is I'm in Arizona, which didn't even become a state. I think until like 1917. Dude, you could have been a Mexican if this thing went wrong, Hunley. Yeah, could have been. You could have been eating Mexican food with Leslie. Well, that that kind of did occur anyway. It occurred anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you were growing up, was most of your food Mexican or? No, not really. Right. Okay. Right. But either either way. But you didn't have seafood, did you? Not growing up, no. 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 No, we had a crazy religion. Ate like Jews. Very weird. Okay. All right. Meatloaf is good. Meatloaf is very good. And right. tongue. Had a lot of tongue. Okay. So these guys, <laughs> just to wrap up, these guys get away with this. And like I said, in 1953, the German government has to pay, you know, a certain amount of money to to get out of this mess. But in terms of a crime and death, the reason these guys hid uh, the, their culpability in it, the actual saboteurs, is because people died and they were afraid that they would be charged with manslaughter. And that kept the thing going for many, many years out of fear of the saboteurs. However, everybody else in the story moved up the chain of command and moved into the Reichstag and moved into other levels were all promoted and were mm. in German politics the rest of their lives. All the guys that pulled us off, Von Papen, Von Riddelen, and uh, Von Dusch, uh, Von Bernstorff. All Pretty the clever. Vons. What's that? Very Von Clever. Yeah, I, mean, I know. It was, yeah. it was a good yeah. operation, if you think about it. It was a it. smooth operation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, better than some of we pulled. Yep. <laughs> anyway. All right, so that um, wraps up this channel. What? What's next? You know what? I, 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 unless we have something emergency, I'd like to do on Friday Bat Boy. Oh, Bat Boy would be fun. Right, because, uh, and I'll tell you why. I don't know. I went into the archives last week, mm -hmm. and I pulled out these weekly world newses, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I could tell the whole story of how I got involved with Bat Boy and the weekly world news, and it's right after 9-11. And I looked, and it was right after the anthrax attack on the right. Weekly World News. So there is some logic to what I'm saying. In terms, of, it may not be chronologically in order a lot of my stuff, but it, it's thematically in order. In my right, mind. we talked anthrax here, so a little anthrax on Friday. Right. right. And, oh my yeah. God, Georgina, thank you so much. Thank you, Georgina. I really Seriously. appreciate it. Yeah, it's a history lesson for me too because it allows me to go back into these stories that I have researched, but it's been a long time, and then find out what's new about it. In regards to the Weekly World News, it's right after 9-11 is the point I'm referencing this. So I, 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 we can put a lot of the stuff up on local. Terror we'll attack, terror attack. Terror attack, yes, anthrax, yes. Bat Boy, Tora Bora. Bat Boy's awesome. I mean, Bat Boy is a true American hero. The um, Heather whatever with the Thank super you, sticker Heather. flying in. The, the, anyway, so I, I thought that might be appropriate for Friday. It's kind of a fun uh, di distraction from this. It's not heavy. It's obviously unless, heavy. unless, uh, unless somebody gets pregnant or uh, yeah. Well, somebody definitely did get pregnant somehow what? or has somebody pregnant for them. What? Um, yeah. So somebody from uh from Boston, Massachusetts, oh apparently my. is oh um yes is uh, going to have another child. So lucky seven, from what I understand, to the um, Baldwin family. What a delight. Some things are supposed to be coming out soon, and oh, that boy. may throw a wrench into Bat Boy, but we will plan like we did for today. We are planning a show, and if Baldwin you'll get what's dropped, coming to you Friday, <laughs> you'll, yeah. you'll get what's coming to you. Come yeah, hell no kidding. water. Yeah, well, it's kind of weird. Hey, how's know? my haircut, by the way? Nobody's complaining about my hair. I know or... that they, they said you lost the you lost the battle with Viva and you went down. I'll be back. I will be back. <laughs> will be back. Viva Actually, will cut his too. We, Viva's wife is going to be start cutting away. By the way, I got. Well, he he put out a poll. Should I cut my hair? So oh no, out. he's leaning, bro. He's leaning. I'm you, telling you right now. You, you may win in the end because he gets today. the fades. Watch. Keep an eye on Viva because he saw mine today. He's going to buckle by the end of the week. He's a he coward. Might. He can't keep that hair forever. He might. He might. Of course, the running joke right now back to Baldwin is that, uh, you know, thank God, um, Will Smith wasn't Baldwin. Oh, right. Or that the joke wasn't made about Baldwin. Right. <laughs> right. That's a good point. That's a, I, you know, everybody, all the comics are going crazy, you know, defending Chris Rock. I mean, uh, as they should. Oh, yeah. I, I, I you know, 
I was just the, the precedent. Him. The precedent for the situation, people don't understand. You just gave a license for yeah. people to attack uh, and physically, com and and you yeah. can't, you cannot have that because right. Right. I mean, we already have, you know, comics can't go to perform at colleges anymore because they yep. just can't survive. And now, now they've got to really be on their edge. You got to worry about security. You get somebody else. You're, you're like, hey, you know, a Men in Black, I'm an American hero, great yep. actor, all that. He can yeah, get away. Every it. comic I know has a story of being attacked on stage in general so at some point in their career, it, it, two or three times. I mean, um, over the long-term comics that I know, and it's the scariest thing because you can't see them coming. You're kind of blinded. They're drunk. You may there may be a heckler. You know, one of those situations. And, and by the way, that was why rock was leaning forward too yeah yeah wasn't it because he was trying to see what yep. is going yep. on here well the fact the that anybody could just walk up on stage at the oscars is now common knowledge i mean yeah I, there's, apparently there is no security at all well it you seemed know. fine it's a private party so to speak that's just film so yeah well, i mean a lot of things it, it, it that that was a there's a lot of unknown reaching. people that people bring as guests, Eric. You know that are, you know, not everyone is is. Um, it was not fake, Angie. No, no. It was not fake. It I, was not. It at was a hundred percent real. It was hundred percent real. Yeah. Um, it's sad. Yeah. I mean, it, if that doesn't kill Hollywood, as I said, nothing will, because that. Uh, well, Somebody already, already dead. I mean, it's just. No, no, but I mean, <laughs> in terms of the the Oscars and the performance and everything else, I mean, it's a new low of a new low of a new low. I mean, really, and I, you know, I feel bad for Chris Rock because he's not really considered part of Hollywood. This is a Brooklyn stand-up comic who grew up worship, you know, who worshipped Jerry Seinfeld. He's not really. He's Hollywood. A he was a class act. Class no, act. I give him Absolutely. major props to the way act. he handled it. Right. Was was remarkable. Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable that oh, he man. went on to give the award for best documentary after that. I mean, I would have been in a fetal position weeping at that point, you know, calling for uh, emergency services. But the fact that he professionally kept going is astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. Class this, act. Total class, class act. act. Total, and representing Brooklyn, you know, because he's from Red Hook, Brooklyn. And, you know, I was really proud of him for continuing to do that. Being yeah, you, you should be. I mean, it, it was... Yeah, I was very really proud just, of Rock. It was like, whoa. And now, yeah. that being said, you know... I, I, I mean, did a video with Nate, um, the lawyer on it, and he's right. Nate's Nate agrees with you. He, except Nate said he would be flopping. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God. Oh, oh, I need some well, that's a lawyer, that, yeah, yes, that's the the lawyer knowing that, <laughs> that he could get a negligence suit against the uh, academy. Yeah. He would be rolling on the ground thinking about who's got the deepest pockets. Oh, yeah. He'd be, the next the toast, oh. or, or, I mean, keep in mind that the, the, um, the criminal who assaulted him has some of the deepest pockets in Hollywood. I mean, yeah, and Scientology to back because maybe you can get them. I'm not sure about it. him, but I I think her. And we're going to do an episode on Scientology uh, at some point because of um, my. Um, <laughs> of course, uh, because they, they, no, they, 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 you had the Moonies. You got to have a little yeah. Scientology. We're going to be doing Jim Jones, from what I understand. Oh, Jim uh, Jones uh, is a good one, but the Scientology <laughs> one, not to, not to tip to but too much but we will do a scientology one so question though would scientology be a fun friday or a, a crazy no i don't know that could go <laughs> either way I, they're very aggressive in hollywood and i may have to move immediately after the show or record it from a remote you know location in the desert it'd be while we're covering the mothman yeah. scientology <laughs> You, you could. I, I mean, look, they're right here, and I'm in the belly of the beast. I mean, they're everywhere here. I mean, well, look it could at, be worse. It could be Clearwater, Florida. Clearwater is the worst. Yeah, that's their headquarters. They own every single policeman, fireman, uh, truck driver in Clearwater, every building. I mean, they bought up a lot of buildings here, too. Um, right. And renovated. Clearwater is the Clearwater, strong. they physically are on the city council. They're not here. Not here. Right, they right. did own uh, the sheriff. Uh, for a number of years here, and no wonder uh, he got the highest salary. Yeah, the sheriff eventually still he's in prison right now. So, oh, nice. Well, the, the, the L.A. Point. sheriff, L.A. County sheriff, had the unique distinction of the highest paid municipal um, employee in America. Well, he's got the toughest job, I'll tell you right now, because this guy goes. They they have been trying to impeach him or recall him uh, with no political support. I mean, oh, so no, he must be doing his job. Right. No, he's an elected <laughs> official. Right. And he ironically won the, such political irony. No one knew who he was. 
And the guy who was running against was a white Irish guy. So they just voted for the Latino, not knowing he was conservative and would be a thorn in their side for a number of years. So they got what they deserved, these mutts. Let me tell you something. That's too funny. But Okay, so what do we do now? We, we Okay, well, heard... now we have to go into our song and dance. And we have to ask. What? Where's the subscribe button? Oh, yeah. You know, people, little kids on the street stopped me the other day saying, I saw how many subscriptions you had. And the guy went, nah, 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 and he ran away. I mean, that's not right, Eric. Little oh, kids in, in Hollywood taunting me because of the low subscription level of the show. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, don't know I think all say. these people have subscribed. We may be beating a dead horse, but we might be. We might be. If they pass the video or, or, or pass it on, maybe to a family a member, a or friend. Enemy. Right? I'll take enemies too. Yeah, or, right. or people in prison who have nothing to watch. That's true. We've got right. like, what, over 50 shows that they could check out? Well, there's a lot of prison themes. I mean, if you're in prison, I mean, people in prison tend and to. And people like who them. should be in prison too. So we have, we and we have Sir Hanser. Yeah, we got a lot. Nobody loves crime shows more than criminals, is what every survey has come up with. But they love crime shows. Sense. Yeah. The uh, America's Most Wanted Criminals. Every, well, you everyone. know, it's like it's like there's people who like home improvement shows, and they're carpenters, right? And and prisoners like true crime. You know, it's like knowledge. It's education. How to? Right. <laughs> now, how you could follow me on Twitter at Lord Buckley. Or you can PayPal me. I prefer the PayPal because following me doesn't give me any financial rewards. It's just another person following me. But PayPal, that's a separate entity. That's a whole different world, right, Eric? Yep, yep. And even more important, uh, locals. Oh, locals, yeah, locals. Unstructured.locals.com. How much is that a month? If if I was five bucks a month, or five a month, or fifty a year, so you can get two year two months off to if you do it by the year. This jacket look, by the way, I feel like I'm very sharp. This is my Oscars jacket. That's why I'm wearing this for the Oscars, which they never call me to be at the Oscars. I had a friend who works Hmm. at the Oscars. No, getting. Thank you, Ray J. Yeah. Um, While you're there, everybody, please check the bell and see. Make sure it's to all notifications because. People have been complaining about that. And by the way, do check that you're subscribed because YouTube actually does unsubscribe people. No, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, shocked. Yeah. They probably unsubscribed a half a million of us. I mean, no, I that must be it. <laughs> well, we read about the What's the girl's name from the Hill? Oh, God. I Lisa forget. something, the Asian American. Right. Girl? Yeah. I don't Lisa, remember her name. I forget her name. I forget her last name, but she, she gave a whole video talking about how she lost 50,000 subscribers. And then they reappeared. Then they went away. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, it, it, they do it now. Some of it's legit, some of it's not. It's it's a kind of a, a pain, but every you know, just check if you will. You, you never know. Uh, Kim, yeah, Kim Iverson. Oh, Kim <laughs> Iverson. Thank. Is that her? No, that's somebody saying that. No, that's somebody who's helping us out. Right. That's, that's why the chat is awesome. I mean, the chat is the like chat this flowing all. knowledge to where we I can just wait and just wait and be like, oh, the answer will come to me. I can act like I'm smart. Right. <laughs> By the way, if you get to see the Duran with Robert Barnes, it's probably the greatest episode of the Duran. It's kind of like uh, Rogan <laughs> and 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 AJ um, mm. in terms of 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 importance. So, they let they let Barnes go. Yeah, the Barnes was unleashed on the Duran this past week. So if you want to understand what the hell's going on overseas, and I'll put it that way. Uh, watch Barnes with the Duran because it's a real meeting of the minds. Um, love the blue jacket. Oh, thank you. See, this is my, this is what I like about the chat. They tell you right away, um, lounge lizard jacket. Thank you. Well, that's a cheap shot. I don't have to take that. The- <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Am I displaying the wrong ones? <laughs> Hunley just pulls out the negative ones. I'm just sure there's landed. a lot of people who saying great haircut. You look like a human being. And then Hunley pulls out dog face boy does show. Good, good point. If we could uh, make the subscribe button look like uh, Chris Rock, at least Will Smith might subscribe. Or we make it look like the Russian reset button that Hillary Clinton put on the on the desk. Remember when they were doing the Russian reset, Eric, <laughs> during the Obama administration? Oh, and thank you. The nth in- 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 degree. Thank you very, very much. Wow. Yeah, so we're going to... I Danielle like the shade of blue. Yeah, Danielle, who, thank you so much. It seems to work. Seems like Oh, even good. more importantly... We both you both look great. Ah, oh, look Thank at you, Sarah. Sarah. She's such a mensch. Sarah Mensch. Sarah M. Oh, what's dude, the word I got of the contacted. day? Did you see I got contacted by a guy 
who grew up with the D'Onofrios in Little Italy from the Levine's bungalow episode of last week? No, no. He knows the family of Marianne D'Onofrio, my first girl girlfriend, whose father was killed by the mob. At least he says that in the chat. In the Oh, uh, wow. Comments. I'm going to follow that up. He grew up with them. Oh, well, and by the way, somebody anybody corrected me on the car. My grandfather's car was, was a 1962. Oh, and dog. you got the wrong body, too. Yes, that's I, fine. I am a complete moron. And I said <laughs> 64 or 66. Who the hell knows what I said? But um, also, people, if, if you do want to contact Thanks, us, Michael. thank you. Um, you know, obviously, Twitter, if you're on Twitter, you can always go to ericunley.com slash contact. And if you send an email in, I will make sure I forward it to Mark if you want, you know, Mark to see it or me to see it. Yeah, whatever. if you're not a psycho, I'll deal with you. I, I mean, I deal with all kinds of riffraff. I mean, but as a reporter, if you're riff or you're raff, a mass murderer, I will deal with you. you know? Yeah, if you're riff or raff, you're cool. Riff or raff, it's fine. But if a killer, psycho killer yeah, right? maybe, or maybe. crazy eyes killer from the Curb Your Enthusiasm episode where he lived in Silver Lake. Um, there you go. I can't really interact with you at that level. And probably not Will Smith right now. So we'll just you, don't bother writing at the moment. Yeah. Will, I mean, you got to take this. He's six foot two, 230. I mean, he is a huge guy. And Chris Rock, I, mean, I think it's like Ali. five, seven Remember, or five. Muhammad Ali, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Chris Rock is like a hundred pounds of soaking wet of five ten. You know, he must've been terrified to see this, this guy coming up on stage. I don't, I don't even know what would go through his mind. You're, you, you, you're doing a show before a billion people worldwide, and here comes this guy. Well, he was confused. I mean, I, I you could yeah. see it in his eyes like, uh-oh. And and he probably is like, if he knew it was Will Smith, he probably just thought he was going to be like, you, you know, make some joke. I, I mean, it, they, they know each other. They have The history. joke about uh, G.I. Jane 2 was such a mild. It's Hollywood. not even mild. It was, it's, it was a compliment. And that's what's so funny is people don't even realize it. G.I. Jane was a badass. He was effectively calling Jada Pinkett Smith a badass. Right. Like you're shaving your head, you're going to war right. with a condition. And that, you know, that was something I put out with Nate. It's like, pay attention. The joke itself actually the joke was a was mild, mild joke. Really. It was a typical Hollywood show business joke, you know, where you mm -hmm. where you where you hit the people in the front row. I mean, I and mean, it's about a I movie. I can't imagine and... Jack Nicholson coming on stage and punching Billy Crystal in the face. Well, hell, what was way. it? Mel Gibson, remember uh, Ricky Gervais just laid him out oh, about everything, dude. It, dude, you ha that's part of being in the business. And you what know, are what these Mel guys, Gibson amateurs. Said? I don't what understand. A, well, what's what funny planet is, are they from, Eric? I mean, well, Gervais tore him up, and Mel Gibson's answer was, "Yeah, I love seeing Ricky again. It reminds me I have to have a colonoscopy every time." Right, whatever. Yeah, you, so I'm just like uh, he reacts. You know, if you're uh, sitting ringside at the Oscars, you're essentially signing a permission slip to be ridiculed by the comics. Yes. I mean, that's part of the deal. And I, I, I could even go even further to say you're informed of the jokes and the bits in uh, beforehand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's how, that's how open ended this thing is. Oh, sure. But what a mild joke. I mean, just ridiculous. It was, but <clears throat> hey, whatever. We'll keep the jokes coming here. We will. Yeah. Now, what about boy? the merch? I'm, I'm more concerned about the oh, new merch you were talking down, about. Down below. Uh, by the way, the, there's merch that has collars in it too. People like the fact I'm wearing a collar. Right on. Um, you know, right I on. can only go so far. We, we're not. I don't know if I'm going to keep this up though. This is a hard. Only on a roll. Collar after collar after collar. Oh only digging deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what anyway, do we have new? What we have a new hat or something or a new? Uh, uh, I, I believe it's more than one hat, but I've got tank tops down there now because the oh, summer's wow. coming up. You know, people. Wait, wait, tank tops for girls or wife beaters oh, for men? Well, they call them tank tops for for both um, both. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, all right. <laughs> and they've got. I think I put both a racer back for women and the normal, like depending on what they like the back to be, because I I know that some run or whatever, and it's more comfortable with different sports bras. Um, uh, tech tea, tech teas are down there. No, we're, we're not selling What's bras a tech yet. Tea? What's a tech tea? A tech tea is a t shirt, but it's made to sweat. It's a, a shirt you can run, in. it's got kind of that smoother, um, material. Um, uh, you anybody who's a runner will be familiar with tech teas. Okay, can we get the if beer you, holders that you put the beer in the cooler cup? The koozies, what's it called? A koozie. Well, we called them an igloo cup, which will be a separate episode of how I invented that. And oh, okay, the koozies are like the little soft cloth, um, whatever. Oh, right. Well, these we use hand. closed, 
a, a, a closed cell pipe insulation and put the logo of the festivals. What on are you there. trying to say, Chris Banks? <laughs> Only in removal, okay? Only in removal. Anyway, Jace, these people. Okay, so you got the merch. We got the, uh, the membership. You could join, subscribe, tell your friends, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. We got um, PayPal. We did that. Locals, 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 and locals did that. by the way of locals. Right. Okay. And uh, merch and, uh, yeah, that's right. All right, and we'll be back on Friday, you're saying. So what's the problem? Why don't we get out of here? All right. See Let's you, go. everybody, later. <laughs> See you. <ya. laughs>